So now this session is being recorded or it's supposed to be recorded. And now, do you see me the methods of scientific inquiry? So uh, on this issue of recording, um, each of my uh, lectures, I will record and I will uh, send you the uh, address of each recording so that on your own time, you can go back, go over the slides and go over my comments to help you study for tests. All right, let's consider how do scientists investigate the natural world? What methods do they use? And the, the point is that many methods are used. There's no one standard way to investigate natural phenomena. Uh, requires logical thinking and analytical skill and perseverance. Underline that, perseverance. It uh, takes a lot of patience to deal with the frustration of having a terrific idea and you check it out and it's not true. Scientists are mere mortals. They get frustrated just like everybody else. Scientific inquiry. And please stop me uh, if you have a question or a, a misunderstanding at, at any point. I'd be happy to uh, stop and deal with it as we go. Can you go back one? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just need time to take a note. Yeah, I'll try not to go too fast because I know that you are taking notes. And uh, one thing that you can do when I, I, uh, I will post this entire slide set in uh, your Canvas container and so one thing you can do is uh, print out copies of particular slides and take notes on the copy that you make. Okay, done with this one. Scientific inquiry. Is there a single scientific method? Uh, the answer is yes and no, and we'll get into that. The elements of scientific inquiry, uh, you start with an observation, you ask questions about that, and based on the observation you made and the questions you have, you construct a hypothesis, and then you test that hypothesis. Also, scientific inquiry requires uh, thinking critically and communicating the new information that you acquire. So these are the elements of scientific inquiry and they're not necessarily done in this order or in any particular order. And I'll, I'll comment more about that in a little bit. But first, you probably have all seen this. This is the standard summary of the scientific method that uh, you get in your first exposure to how science is done. Very simple straightforward. You make an observation. From that observation, you make a hypothesis to try to explain it. And you do some experiments to see if your hypothesis is correct. If it is, you now have a theory. If it's not, you go back and change your hypothesis. If your theory turns out to be wrong, you go back and change your hypothesis and do more experiments. So, this is a, a useful visualization of the scientific method, but is it the way science is actually done in the real world? Almost never. It's not a straight line process like this. So just to make a contrast, here's the scientific method contrasted with an engineering method. There are lots of different methods. There are uh, mathematical methods. There are uh, physical methods. There are astronomical methods. Uh, the, the scientific method is, is one of them, and it's, it's really fundamental to scientific investigations. So I won't go through each of these boxes, except go down to the green one. 
Uh, in a scientific method, you have a hypothesis and you test it with an experiment. In the case of engineering, you don't do an experiment. Uh, you, you take the information you have, you brainstorm, evaluate, and come up with uh, a solution, a proposed solution, and uh, test it out. In both types of methods, you end up with new information and you need to communicate the results to, to your clientele. Okay, so that's just a comparison of two different, of, of another method compared to the scientific method. So not all methods are scientific. And so I emphasized experiment. What is an experiment? It's a controlled test. In the simplest uh, form, an experiment is a control and a treatment. In an experiment, the, an ideal experiment, only one variable is changed at a time. In the case of experiments in biology, it's not usually easy to control all the variables because bio biological systems are very complex. So you have to be aware if you do an experiment and, and not all the variables are controlled, which ones are not and how does that affect your ability to draw a conclusion? Among variables, some are independent, some are dependent. An independent variable is the one that you, the investigator, choose. The dependent variable varies depending on uh, the independent variable that you have chosen. And that will become a little more clear uh, as we go. You said the independent is the one chosen by the person doing the experiment? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. Uh, so here, we're back to methods of scientific inquiry, and these are the four elements of it. Making observations, asking questions, developing hypotheses, uh, conducting investigations, thinking critically and communicating information. So you remember, these are the, uh, these are the elements of a scientific inquiry. And this is a way most of us are initially taught to think about that. But this is the way it actually works. So you see that all the boxes are connected by arrows to all the other boxes, and all the arrows are, uh, have both ends active. They're pointing in both directions. So while you're making observations and asking questions, you're thinking critically. In fact, you think critically um, in, about all of these. And what does that mean? Uh, crit critical critically means you're being critical. You're always in disbelief. Do I really uh, accept what, this, what these data are telling me? And at the end, uh, you always have to communicate information because what good is your new discovery if nobody knows about it? And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about publication uh, in the end. Okay, making observations and asking questions. Questions arise as a result of observations, and they can be answered in one of two ways. It can be observational or experimental. Now, observational means just that, you make observations, discovery-based, uh, and very often observations are, involve counting. You count numbers of whatever it is you're interested in. Experimental, on the other hand, is hypothesis testing. So not only have you made an observation, you set up a system by which you can test and you can make predictions 
and see if the predictions you've made based on your hypothesis are really true. So let's take a, a couple of minutes to go through these hypothetical situations. Are they discovery or experimental science? So look at the first one. A scientist goes to Alaska three years in a row and counts the number of polar bears found in a particular five square mile region. Okay, I want you to tell me, is this discovery or experimental? I'll give you a little time to think about that. Okay, you've thought about it. Um, anybody have an answer? Discovery. This is discovery. Why is it discovery? Because every five miles he finds polar bears. And there's yeah. no experiment being made. Yeah, so that solidifies your observation. But note that there is no experiment here. All the scientist does is goes to Alaska every year and counts and writes down the number. So he's discovered that every year there is a certain number of polar bears, but he's asked no question about, he's not tried to experiment uh, with the system and ask, for example, is the number of polar bears related to the temperature that year? So yes, that's discovery science. Let's go to the next one. Again, I'll give you a little time to think about this. A scientist determines the DNA sequence of the gene that is responsible for the disease uh, cystic fibrosis. Is that discovery or experimental? Discovery. Someone said discovery. Anybody disagree? Experimental. Yeah, Yes, you are right. It is discovery. So even though sequencing a gene is a very sophisticated operation, it's still not experimental. It's only discovery. You look at the sequence and you can see that there are A's and T's and G's and C's there, but it tells you nothing about uh, what that sequence uh, is useful for in an organism. Next one. The scientist determines the rate of growth of plants given different uh, doses of a new fertilizer. Some of the plants are given no fertilizer. Experimental? Yes, that's experimental. And why is it experimental? There's an independent variable and then a dependent one. That's right. And the control, what is the control here? The control is a new fertilizer. No, the fertilizer is the experimental. The control ah. is the, are the plants given no fertilizer. So you see how the plants with, with no fertilizer, how they perform, how fast they grow. And then you have this fertilizer and you give different plants different doses of it and see if there's any response. So is, is that clear that the, the, the control is uh, plants with no fertilizer. All right, let's go to the next one. Scientists take a submarine to an area of the ocean floor. Look for the organisms there. What is that? Discovery? Right, it's discovery. And again, it's discovery because there's no experiment? They're just observing, there's no experiment. That's right. And the last one, uh, scientists test the growth rate of a newly discovered bacterium on different types of food sources. 
discovery. Experimental. Okay, I've heard both. Is it discovery or is it experimental? Experimental. Experimental. Okay. The census is it's experimental and that's right. But how is this actually done? Different types of food sources, bacterial growth. How do you set that up? Well, in this case, there's no uh, obvious or no uh, uh, requirement for a particular uh, condition to be the control. So you, the scientist, have to pick one. So you, you have to choose a food, because food is going to be the control here. You have to choose a food on which the bacteria can grow. Then you take that same food and you supplement it with various things. For example, you might supplement it with an amino acid. You might test all 20 amino acids in this food source, and you ask, are any of the amino acids uh, do they, any, does any amino acid promote growth more than the standard food source that you established at the beginning? So you see the difference here that you, the scientist, decide on what the control is. Okay, any questions or comments? These are, are pretty straightforward situations. If not, I'll go to the next slide. Developing hypotheses and conducting investigations. So what is a hypothesis? It's a tentative, underlying tentative. Explanation or answer to a question. Experimental science investigations are based on controlled hypothesis testing. What do we mean by a control? We've already talked about that. A control is a constant, it does not change throughout the experiment. Observational science may or may not be testing a hypo hypothesis, very often not. Some questions are answered through a combination of both observation and experiment. Proposing a hypothesis. It's a possible answer or a tentative explanation for what you observed. It's different from a theory. We'll, we'll compare a theory and hypothesis on the next slide. But a theory is a broad set of uh, principles that explains or makes predictions about some natural phenomenon. Uh, and again, it's, it's based on experimental manipulation. Hypotheses reflect past experience. And if you can propose more than one hypothesis for your uh, observation, that's better. And you can test them all. But here are, are two critical uh, parameters. A hypothesis must be testable. And it must be falsifiable. That means you have to be able to have some way of disproving it if it's not true. So supposing I get up in the morning and see that my car has been parked on the other side of the street and I make a hypothesis that since I don't think it was there last night that someone from another planet must have moved it. So that's my hypothesis. Is it testable? No, there's, there's no way that I can determine if uh, an alien came and moved my car. So uh, any, any hypothesis you come up with, uh, you must have a way of, of uh, determining if it's true or not. Hypotheses can be eliminated, but not confirmed with absolute 
uh, certainties. So you can prove uh, that a hypothesis is not correct under the conditions that you've tested it. You can prove that, but you can never prove with certainty that it is correct. There's no absolute truth in science. And uh, depending on how important your observation is, uh, you and others may continue to try to disprove it for many years. And usually, the, the real test of, uh, of the, the, the validity of a hypothesis is if it's repeatable. So if you can go through a protocol, an experimental protocol, and get a result, can you do that same protocol again and get the same result? So that is a rigorous test of your hypothesis, repeatability. An even more rigorous test is, can someone else from another lab at a, another institution take your protocol that you've published, repeat it precisely, and get your result? If they can, very strong confirmation that you are on the right track. If they can't, then you have a controversy and you work it out. Okay, let's look at um, how a hypothesis is different from a theory. The left column is hypothesis, the right column is theory. Definition, we've gone through this already. Hypothesis is a suggested explanation for an observation. A theory is a is well-substantiated explanation set on proven hypotheses. A hypothesis is based on a suggestion. Theory is based on evidence. They are both testable. They are both falsifiable. A hypothesis is not well substantiated. It's only a suggestion, whereas a theory is. A hypothesis is based on very limited data data meaning information, based on your observations. Whereas the theory is based on a, a wide set of data tested under various conditions, various circumstances. Which one's a suggestion? A hypothesis is the suggestion. And uh, theory was based on, what was that again? Excuse me? You said the uh, hypothesis was based on suggestion and the theory was based on uh, well substantiated information. So, uh, a hypothesis based on a suggestion, um, a theory is based on usually experimental evidence. Another way to think about the difference is that a hypothesis is specific, whereas a theory is general. A hypothesis is usually based on a specific observation, very limited information about it. Whereas a theory uh, is based on multiple tests and experiments and can one principle can apply to a, ver a variety of different instances. And finally, the purpose of a hypothesis is to present an uncertain possibility. It's a way to start thinking about how to get new information. Whereas a theory is already an explanation that is set uh, and, and receptive to further uh, investigation to see if further testing makes, uh, makes it, uh, confirms it or not. Okay, thinking critically. Um, <clears throat> identification and articulation of problems. Very often the success or failure of your investigation depends on 
the question you ask or even how you ask the question. So you need to gather relevant information. Once you have, you need to organize it. And there are many different ways of organizing information. The whole purpose of organizing it is to try to extract uh, information from the data. And to illustrate this, consider data in a table versus a graph. So here you have a table. These are numbers from an experiment. You look at those numbers and what does it tell you? It tells you nothing. They're just numbers. But if you take those numbers, and these are not the same numbers that are graphed, but if you take a set of numbers and graph them, you start to see that information comes pouring out of that graph. So what you see, first of all, is that over time, there are changes. And the changes can be either an increase or a decrease or no change at all. And on, on the y-axis, you see there are numbers. So numbers are changing over time. So the, the point I'm trying to make here is that you can take a set of numbers and just look at the numbers and get no information out of them. Or you can display them in a, in a graph or a chart of some sort to try to get uh, additional information from the numbers. In case you can't read it, those numbers, blue is, this is a wildlife population, blue is bears, orange is dolphins, and gray is whales. Okay, the last point I want to make is about communicating information. Once you've made a discovery and you're pretty sure it's based on uh, solid information, you want to tell people about it. How do you do that? Well, you might go to the lab next door and talk to them, talk to your neighbors. Uh, you might uh, go to a scientific conference, get up and speak, tell the audience your news, or the gold standard of uh, science is publication. So then it's down in black and white, the whole world can see it. But there are different ways to communicate scientifically or in, in, in terms of a publication. You write up your information according to the standard uh, format of a particular journal that you want to send it to. You send it and it goes out for review peer review. So other people working in your field read your, in the draft of your publication and they critique it. They tell you what they think is good about it and they tell you where you think it needs to be improved. Send it back and you consider their comments and you either uh, disagree or you change the manuscript accordingly. Now you have to decide where to send it. So there are the standard scientific publications like the journal Science, the journal Nature. These are very old journals. They've published leading edge science for many, many years. Very difficult to get your work published in one of these journals. Uh, and <clears throat> it's expensive. These and many other journals are for profit and they charge you a lot of money just to publish your information. However, now that we have the internet, there's a whole new crop of journals that has come out where you can not only get a peer review free, but if the peers decide it's publishable, uh, it's, it's published free. And, uh, an example of this is PLOS, the People's Library of Science. It's online, it's free, you can look this up yourself. Uh, you can do searches on it and uh, find the, the uh, articles on the topic that you're interested in. Any, any questions about uh, choices 
for getting your, your work published. I mentioned that uh, scientific meetings are a, a very standard practice. As you go forward in your field, you will want to attend uh, meetings that specialize in the area of interest for you. You get to know your colleagues from other institutions that are doing the same kind of work that you're doing. Okay, and finally, I have sent you a worksheet, which we will talk about uh, on Wednesday. You, uh, hopefully you, you can find this worksheet in your Canvas uh, canister and uh, answer it, fill it out, and we'll go over the information on that worksheet on Wednesday. And it can be filled out online. Excuse me? It can be filled out online. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you hit uh, reply or post, or whatever the prompt is to get it recorded. Yeah, the, this particular worksheet is graded. That is what I have for today. Uh, anything else from you? The worksheet, uh, you said that one's due on Wednesday? Yeah, it's actually uh, do I think Tuesday evening, but then we will discuss it on Wednesday. Tuesday tomorrow, correct? Yeah. Could you go to um slide eleven? Slide eleven. Uh huh. Again, I will uh, go ahead. I think we have a, another student that hasn't we'll called their name. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, what's the name? Uh, Brian Houston. Oh, we got him. I'm here. Okay. That's weird. Sorry, did you happen to get me? I was having some difficulties with my. Uh, my laptop. Tell me your neighbor or your name. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Perla. Perla. Oh, oh. Right. I didn't have you, but I do now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Same here. Uh, who who just spoke? Um, it's Doris Salazar. How do you spell your last name? S A L A Z A R. S. Derez Salazar. Am I pronouncing that right, Salazar? Yes. Okay, I've got you. Anything else? Um, I noticed on the worksheet that we're about to do. It's. Um, do you just want us to record our answers on paper and then take a picture of it and submit it, or? You can do that. Uh, you can also just click edit. And then, for example, when it gives you, you have to say uh, which ones are the right ones. You can just put an X beside that number. That will indicate that, that and, and I think one of them is about theories and hypotheses. So you can just put a, an H beside a hypothesis and uh, a T beside a theory. OK, thank you. Anything else about slide 11? Not about slide 11, but you said you would be posting the slideshow on Canvas, right? Yes. 
So okay. I will put it there uh, after this class is over. So you can just, just go in case we need to go back for something. Yeah, yeah, that, that's entire slide set will be in, in your Canvas container. And I think I have recorded it. So um, all of my comments and your comments uh, should be there. Okay, thank you so much. It says there's a Haley Lima here. A what? Haley Lima. Uh, how do you spell the last name? Halima. Oh, Halima. Starts with A. Last name, Ajimaid. Oh, D U M A D. D O U. Uh, spell the last name again. I don't see it here. O D U M A D E. O D. Okay. Put it in the chat if you want. I see it. Alima. Um, How do you pronounce your last name? Odumade? Whatever I've got you recorded as present. And where can I find a worksheet? Um, is it on Canvas? Yeah. Should be in your Canvas container. If you, uh, you go to the navigation guide, when you, when you open the container for this section, go to the navigation guide and you can find, find it there uh, under either announcements or assignments or discussions. It, I, I think that was entered as an assignment. So that's where you should find it. Oh yeah, I see it. How do we edit the worksheet? At uh, the top left, you should see a box that says edit. Up there. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I do not see the edit button, but it looks like my worksheet is already filled out and I have not touched it. <laughs> uh, Same with mine when I looked earlier. Really? Why would that be? Well, are the answers right? Check them. I, I don't know how to explain that, um, but check. Uh, and if yeah, mine filled out too. Yours also was filled Same out. Same for me. Same for yeah, me. Yeah, it has all the hypothesis and and um, theories questions are answered, and then there's just one and two word answers for the for the long questions at the bottom. Okay, I don't know how to explain that, um, but. Okay, so for, for purposes of discussion on, on Wednesday, uh, you say that there are no answers to the, the two problems at the bottom? They're just one and two word answers. Like on the very last one, it, it just says don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, so you should know. So you write something uh, and we'll, we'll discuss that so think think about those uh, word problems, and uh, where she goes, we're just going to do the two word problems at the bottom, correct? Well, look at the rest of it, and we'll discuss whether whether the answers that are there are right or wrong on Wednesday. If it doesn't have the edit button, um, how are we supposed to write? Should we just write it down in a notebook and like send in a picture? Or how should we turn it in if there's no way to edit what's already there? There's no reply or post. Um, well, it, uh, the, uh, if you can't find any other way. If you press submitted assignment, um, an entry box is below. So just like copy and paste it and then you can edit it. 
Okay. Thank you. Oh, I see that. <clears throat> Did everybody get that? Yeah. Okay, on Wednesday, we'll do two things. We'll, we'll discuss this worksheet and we'll move on to an introductory to biology. Okay, if uh, there's nothing else, I'll Stop the recording and stop the meeting. And I'll see you all on Wednesday. Have a good day. Have a good day.